Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. I've been noticing in the news all these uh, headlines and articles about a new mini moon. And as I saw this, I thought some of the same questions I have other people might have. So I thought I'd do a little reading on it and share what I found with you guys. Uh, the new mini moon has been named 2024 P25. But some of the questions I thought of are, well, what is a mini moon, first of all? And then where did this thing come from? How big is the mini moon? And is it gonna present any threats to Earth? And then if you have um, binoculars you use for sky gazing, or you have a telescope with eyepieces, or even a telescope with astrophotography gear, are you gonna be able to see this mini moon? Will you be able to image it? Which might be pretty cool. And then lastly, how long is this mini moon gonna stick around? So if you enjoy videos on amateur astronomy, astrophotography, I encourage you to click the subscribe button and let's jump right in and see what answers I found to some of these questions. Well, first off, what is a mini moon? To put it simply, it's a space object that temporarily gets captured in Earth's orbit. So this is different from um, a regular moon, which is a permanent fixture of a planet. Now we know that asteroids and asteroid belts, just like the Earth, are orbiting around the sun. And sometimes as the different objects in the solar system interact with each other, like the proximity of one object with the other, as that interaction occurs, their gravity influences the other objects. Sometimes a space object will approach the Earth at just the right speed and just the right distance so that the gravity of the Earth has more influence over the object than the gravity of the sun itself. And this temporarily influences or alters the trajectory of this space object. Scientists say that to become a mini moon, an object must approach Earth at a fairly close distance. In fact, it must be about 2.8 million miles from Earth. It must be traveling at the right speed as well, which is about 2,200 miles per hour, before this interaction between the Earth and this other space object takes place where it's sufficient enough to influence the trajectory of the object. So we can think of many moon events as coming in two flavors. First, there's the long episode many moon event. And this is where the space object completes one or more orbits around the Earth. And then in addition to that, these typically last for one or more years. Secondly, we have short episode many moon events. And in these, the object typically doesn't complete an entire revolution or entire orbit around the Earth. And these mini moon events may only last for days, weeks, or a few months. So the next question is, where did this asteroid actually come from? So researchers say that um, 2024 P25 is originating from the Arjuna asteroid belt. Wikipedia has some interesting information about the Arjuna asteroid belt. It says that the Arjuna asteroids, are also known as the Arjunas, are a dynamic group of asteroids in the solar system. Arjunas are near-Earth objects, or NEOs, whose orbits are very Earth-like in character, having low inclination, orbital periods close to one year, and low eccentricity. They constitute a dynamically code group of small NEOs that experience repeated trappings in the one-to-one -one mean motion resonance with the Earth. So the next question is just how big is the asteroid 2024 P25 or this new mini moon? Well, some of the early reports indicated they thought it might be somewhere between like 16 and 138 feet across but more accurate reports came out as they studied a little bit more. And the most recent uh, ind indication is it's about 33 feet across. So to help us think about how big is this asteroid 2024 P25, we can think of a couple common items we're familiar with. How about a school bus? The, the average school bus is something around close to that 33 feet long. And then another one, if you've ever been to one of the shows for orcas, um, the adult orca gets to be about 32 feet long. So it kind of gives you a general idea of how long or how far across is this asteroid. And it gives us an idea of really 
how small it is, right? One of the next questions that comes to mind is, will this be a threat for Earth? Well, it was first spotted on August 7th by the NASA-funded ATLAS system. And that's a doozy of an acronym. So I'm gonna read what that actually stands for. It's Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. So this is located in the island of Maui in Hawaii. Wow, the name of that system sounds pretty menacing, doesn't it? Atlas or Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. But fortunately, scientists have done their studies and discovered that the, the path of this asteroid, this trajectory in this temporary orbit around Earth doesn't present any threat to Earth. It's not gonna have an impact where there'd be any danger presented to humans. So this next question is one of the most interesting ones for me. If you have binoculars for stargazing or you have a telescope with eyepieces or you typically use your telescope with like a CMOS camera to take imaging uh, of you know deep sky objects or the planets. So what do you think? Are you gonna be able to see, observe this mini moon while it's here? Or do you think you'll be able to take an image of it? When you leave your comment about that, please leave a list of your equipment that you're gonna use for observing or imaging so that we can have a better idea of how you're gonna accomplish that. So when it comes to observing or imaging, the first thing we have to consider is the size of the mini moon. So once again, um, the studies have shown it's about 33 feet across. So to put that in perspective again, let's think about the average school bus, about how long the average school bus is. Or we can think again about that other example of the orca, the adult orca, and about how long that is. You know, we can see our permanent moon very easily, but it's really big in comparison. How big is it? Well, the moon has a diameter of about 2,159 miles. I guess there could be various statistics reported. That's uh, one of them I found it seems to be fairly close to accurate. So obviously 33 feet in comparison to something that has a diameter of over 2,100 miles, that's a huge difference, right? But not only will the size of the mini moon make it a challenge to observe or to image, it's also not very bright. It's a dim object. And uh, when you look at anything about um, astronomical objects, you find that they're, they're often measured in magnitude, which gives us an idea of the brightness of the object. And there's also something called apparent magnitude or what the magnitude appears to us from our perspective or a viewer on Earth. But when we think about the magnitude of um, space objects, we have to remember that magnitude is, the measurement of magnitude is kind of reverse of what we might expect. Usually we think of a bigger number as being something larger or greater. But in this case, the higher the number, the dimmer the object, and the lower the number, or even if it goes into the negative, the brighter the object. So this also is a good way to think about what is it gonna be like to try to observe or image this mini moon. So normally it's said that a human can only observe you know, visually an object that has a magnitude of about a positive 6.5. But this asteroid or mini moon known as 2024 PT5, it has a magnitude of 27.59 something. So think about that. It's, you know, if, if we can only see something that's 6.5, and when the number is larger, in this case, quite a bit larger, 27 point something, it's gonna be much dimmer than what we can usually see with the naked eye looking up into the skies uh, from a dark location. So I thought I would share some of the apparent magnitudes of a few different objects to give us something to compare to. Let's start with something very bright, and I'll, I'll have to, read these off because I can't remember all these. So the sun is a negative 26.7 apparent magnitude or how the magnitude appears to us observing it. Well, next think of the full moon. That has an apparent magnitude of minus 11. 
And then there's Polaris, one of the stars that's well known. It has a magnitude of a positive 2.02. .02. And then another object you may have been encouraged to just try to find in the sky, just using the naked eye at night, is the Andromeda Galaxy. It has a, an apparent magnitude of positive 3.4. And then lastly, another object that most of us are familiar with is the planet Uranus. And we probably studied about this in school and we saw like that model of the solar system, either a physical one in the classroom or on the computer. And then the other thing is a lot of times we'll see a news article that says uh, tonight Uranus is going to be at opposition. You, you might be able to see it. It is a little challenging to see, but as it falls under that 6.5, um, it's 5.66 is it's a positive 5.66 is its apparent magnitude. It is something that should be visible with the naked eye. So that gives you a pretty good example of the list of things, starting with the sun at minus 26.7 apparent magnitude, and then Uranus with a positive 5.66 magnitude, apparent magnitude. So by comparison, the dimmest object there was the planet Uranus, plus 5.66 apparent magnitude. But this asteroid, 2024 PT5, has a positive 27.595 apparent magnitude. So it's much, much dimmer than something that usually we can see with the naked eye. I also read in another article that the faintest object visible to the Hubble telescope is of magnitude 30. So you can see how, how dim this object is at 27 point something. It's nearly as, you know, there's, there's some order of um, a ratio when you go up a scale or down a scale with this um, magnitude. It's like 2.5 or something like that is the ratio. But still, you can see how it's, it's quite a bit dimmer than something we'll be able to see. And seems like it'd be difficult to image, not saying impossible but difficult to image it as well. So again, I'd like to get your thoughts and your comments. Do you think you'll be able to image or observe this mini moon 2024 P25 with the equipment that you have available? Uh, the articles I'm reading seem to indicate that the experts think um, with the naked eye, one won't be able to see it. And they also seem to suggest that people with amateur equipment also won't be able to see it with their eyepieces. And they say even the most likely thing is that one would need professional grade equipment to be able to image this mini moon. And even one article I read said that you'd have to have like a 30 inch telescope and a CCD or CMOS camera to be able to capture an image of this mini moon. Well, I don't know. I mean, that was the opinion given in that article and I'm sure there's gonna be uh, some of us who, you know, maybe there's some of us who have, you know, I don't really have the biggest telescope that amateurs even typically have. So it's possible some of us will have some pretty decent sized telescopes and some really sensitive cameras and we might try to image this uh, mini moon. If you do plan to image the mini moon, again, if you, if you don't mind, Share in the comments, what is the equipment that you have, like the um, aperture of your telescope and also your uh, camera that you're using? And what kind of plans do you have as far as like how the settings you think you might use to image this uh, mini moon while it's here temporarily? So the last question is, how long will this mini moon 2024 P25 stick around? Scientists say that instead of completing a complete orbit or circle around the Earth, that this mini moon is gonna do like a, a trajectory, like kind of like a horseshoe shape as it goes around the Earth because as it, as it gets around, I guess, to that other side of the U, the sun is gonna exert enough gravitational influence that's gonna start to pull, influence this um, asteroid back towards its normal asteroid belt and its normal orbit around the sun. The temporary orbit of this mini moon started on this Sunday, September 29th. And scientists say that's gonna last for close to two months, about 57 days. So on November 25th, this asteroid will escape 
the gravitational pull of Earth again, and it's going to return to the Arjuna asteroid belt and become part of that asteroid belt again and continue its orbit around the sun. Interestingly, scientists say that um, this visit to Earth and this temporary um, semi-orbit around the Earth uh, won't be the last time that uh, 2024 PT-5 uh, visits Earth. Actually, in the year 2055, if any of us are around then in 2055, that this uh, also will be influenced again by Earth's gravitational pull enough to become a mini, mini moon on another occasion. I hope you found this video informative and interesting about the new mini moon. And if you do enjoy watching videos about amateur astronomy and amateur astrophotography, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Please leave any comments or your own experience learning about this mini moon or other things you enjoy with astrophotography. And I'm wishing you clear skies.